If you're new to my channel, I am absolutely obsessed with eyeshadow palettes. I have over 500 in my own personal collection. So for today, I'm going to share with you the top 10 eyeshadow palettes that I've tried so far in 2022. These are all absolutely amazing eyeshadow palettes. I must say though, this year of the eyeshadow releases, they have not been as good as previous two years because I'm looking at what's on my table and they all are amazing palettes, don't get me wrong. But I can remember in previous years, there were so many I had such a hard time choosing a top 10. 10. Not this year. This year was like these 10 were very easily my picks, but they're all amazing. So let's get started. I did have all of these palettes in alphabetic order. So we're going to start with ABH. Now this is the newest palette that I am mentioning. I just got it a week ago, but I just, I already know. It is one of the top 10 palettes to have launched this year. This is a palette that I'm wearing today because I'm still currently testing this palette out. This is the fourth look that I've done. And so this is the ABH Nouveau palette, first of all. And this, I feel like, is ABH's turnaround in the makeup industry. This is the perfect modernized version of what made AB so popular in the first place. I think the color story is really ethereal and earthy and so pretty. The quality is amazing, even better I'd argue than like the previous palettes that were super powdery. Such a phenomenal palette. So currently on my eyes, I started off with Paloma, which is a bone colored shade on my brow bone and blended it into my inner corner as well. I then went into Fleur, right? Right here and I use that in my crease to have a little bit of peach and dimension poking through in the look. You don't notice it too much but it creates subtle depth in the eye look and warms it up just a little bit. And then the main show I used Wisteria. I haven't yet gotten the chance to use this all over the lid. I really wanted to see what it could do, how it could back on and I am so impressed with how it performed today in this aspect. I haven't gotten to apply it in such a large surface area of the eye and it is incredible quality. It is buildable. And then I actually went back in with Paloma right here and I pressed it into the inner half of my eyelid to create a little bit more dimension to the eye to have that light to darker fade here. Obviously, it's still a very bright look. But yeah, that's what I did with today's palette. We went all matte. I really had to play with Wisteria and it is still holding strong. So my update for you guys as I've been continuing to use this, I mean, this is in my top 10 palettes of palettes that have launched this year. So yeah, I highly recommend this. It's awesome. The next palette that I have is from Charlotte Tilbury. So earlier in the year, Charlotte Tilbury launched the Pillow Talk Dreams Luxury Palette. And a lot of times while I do love her quads, I don't necessarily recommend them, to, especially to start off with the brand because it's not the best value. You don't get the biggest range of colors. You only get four. But I have to say this formula is, mm, it is one of her very best formulas that she's ever come out with. And also the colors in here are super wearable, but very true to Charlotte Tilbury. She's amped it up with the glimmery shimmery shades in here. The mattes blend themselves out. This is a great representation of Charlotte Tilbury and the best of the best that the brand can do. It's it's that pillow talk vibe that she's very well known for but amped up because she does have a pillow talk quad which I think is overrated but the pillow talk dreams is so much better than the original pillow talk and again like I said her quads are super duper pricey so I let you know what's worth it and what's not from the brand and most of the time the majority of her quads, especially the older ones, I find to be really inconsistent and just not simply worth the price. And I feel like she's really improved the formula lately and these are worth it. Maybe not the whole line is worth it, but this is a particular shade that I think is a really great investment into a really good eyeshadow palette that's going to be great for travel, great for creating a look that you don't have to think about. You can just throw it on. Charlotte Tilbury even gives you a guide as to how she thinks this palette could be best applied for a very gorgeous look. So yeah, I recommend this one. This is one of my favorites. Charlotte Tilbury really knocked it out of the park with this shade. Okay, moving into ColourPop, I do have a ColourPop palette. And you know, when I was making this list, I wanted to make sure all of these were palettes that I was consistently reaching for. I have 500 eyeshadow palettes. So if I reach for a palette pretty consistently and I'm having to not use it to use my other palettes, that's a pretty good indication that it's a great palette. So for ColourPop over the summer and the spring, it's been the In the Limelight palette for me. I have been really 
enjoying a simple wash of color all over the lid for the summer. As you can see, I did a wash of purple, but for the summer, I've really been enjoying a wash of neon, like green or yellow, whatever you want to call it. But I talk about a lot how ColourPop quality can be inconsistent. This is a really, really good one. This is on the good side of the inconsistencies. The shimmers are really pretty. They stick to the lid. That's the main problem I noticed with the inconsistency with ColourPop is that the shimmers don't stick to the lid. They do here. And all of these colors are cohesive with one another. I know it's a lot of different textures of the same shade here, but they all kind of create a different vibe and look. And, and obviously the look is going to be monochromatic. You can't really play around too much with it. But since this is the color for me for the summer, I love this so much. And the quality is really great. The price is phenomenal for what you get. It's a really great palette to have to kind of get you outside of your comfort zone. And surprisingly, I found this color not to be obnoxious on the eyelids. You look at it and you think so, but it's actually been quite wearable and fun and just the perfect pop for summer. So I highly, highly recommend this palette. You can't go wrong. It's really cheap and it's really great quality. Okay, so I was going to count these as one, but I figured we'd count them as separate. But I've discovered M Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes this year and they killed it. So these are from the Masterpiece collection that launched this year and both of them are equally as great and as beautiful. So I'm going to start off actually with the Rodin one and this is the lighter one. So it turns out the shadows are bomb.com quality. The mattes are really blendable. They have a great level of pigmentation. They're buildable as well and the shimmers are just so gorgeous and shimmery and I love a cool toned kind of neutral eye for every day. Those are the palettes that I typically reach for. So this has been really really nice. I mean it holds six colors which is not too much but it's not too little. I really enjoy the looks that I get and then I'm also just going to show you Da Vinci right here. Both of these are included in the top 10 list. I've just been really shocked at this quality. This one is a little bit darker. I think I prefer this one over Rodin. I like the depth that you can get, but I constantly find myself mixing and matching both of these. So yeah, these are great for me to take on a weekend trip. Throw it in my makeup bag. Doesn't take up too much space. You have a good amount of colors. Really reliable quality. So in terms of just me reaching for these, I've reached for these a lot because I love the color story. I love the quality. Maybe not the most exciting exciting palette I'm talking about in today's video or the most exciting release of this year but just downright reliable been using these a lot. Another palette that I have that looks kind of similar to the M Cosmetics oh my gosh this is so good the quality Okay, so this is from Kaleidos. They came out with a couple quads in their Smoky Nostalgia collection, and this, I believe, is called Cold Brew. They don't have the name on it, which kind of annoys me, but that's just a YouTuber problem. <laughs> but yeah, these eyeshadow palettes could cost $89, because that is what Tom Ford has the audacity to charge, but these are better than a Tom Ford quad, if you ask me. The mattes are super creamy, buttery, and blendable, and this shade right here is an amazing, glimmery, reflective shade. This is in the range of tones that I'm most comfortable wearing that I feel the most pretty in for events and every day and confident and all of that stuff and yeah I mean I wouldn't say these are cheap Kaleidos had a little bit of a higher price point for these but it is very well deserved I mean it is totally worth the price the shimmer is really unique really reflective and again the mattes literally blend themselves so this is in my opinion an underrated palette I mean everybody who tried this loved it but I feel like a lot of stuff launched in this collection and and these quads, there was another one that came out that's also good, just don't like the color story as much. These quads really didn't get the moment to shine exactly for how good the quality is. And also, I just, I'm biased because I like the color story. So this is another great one that I've been reaching for. Not every day, obviously, but if I could, I would. All right, next up, I was not expecting this to be in my top 10, but it was a palette that I could not put down this spring. And even if I didn't wear this palette, I was getting inspired from looks that I was seeing with this palette. So even though I had to test other palettes, I was seeing looks that were created from this palette and I would copy it with other palettes so that I could try out other palettes. I just constantly had this palette in my mind. It was constantly re-inspiring me. And that is the Natasha Denona Pastel. Now, I'm telling you now, this is not one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes. She has a lot of other better palettes to offer, but in terms of what have come out this year, Natasha does such a good job that whatever palette she comes out with, it's just going to be one of my all-time favorites compared to all of my palettes. Yeah, this is not kind of my cup of tea when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, though if you look at me, I mean, you might disagree because you can totally get a look similar to what I'm wearing with this palette, but if you like pastels, if you're looking to dig into pastels, these are a really great, reliable pastel formulation, and I 
I have never been so into pastels as much as I was this year and I have to thank Natasha Denono for that. I've worn so many pretty bright pastel eyes because of this palette. Whether it was from this palette or not, it's because of this palette that I was inspired to do so. So once again, this is not the first Natasha Denona palette to do this to me, but I just felt so inspired by this palette. And these are very, very high quality pastels, and it has encouraged me to step outside of my normal comfort zone when it comes to eyeshadow palettes and really play around in every look that I do with this palette. I really, really love it. So yeah, I mean, I don't know that I'd necessarily recommend this to everyone everybody because this is a lot of money to pay for pastel tones but I'm telling you now this might be that little push that you need to kind of step out of the brown colors that's what happened to me so I do recommend this if you're interested in the color story I think it is stunning and as per usual I mean the colors that Natasha put together were really really great and you have so much variety in the looks that you can create with this palette okay I mean this is like not surprising Odin's eye has been absolutely killing it lately so this is the Salmon 2 palette. I also really loved the Angie Angelica Nikest, uh, the Hella palette. I almost put it in this one, but I tend to reach for these colors a little bit more, but just know that one is also very good. But this one has like the purples and the blues, which I'm really partial to, as you can see purple blue as you can guess but yeah I don't know how Odin's eye makes eyeshadows at the price that they do with all the textures and the dimensional shades that they put in here the mattes are super pigmented very easy to blend just a really high quality formula at a very I will it's not an affordable like drugstore price but it's a very good price for what you're getting for the style of packaging and the artwork that's on there for the quality of the shadows for the dimension that's in the shimmer shadows it really is quite incredible what they're able to to do and this Salmon 2 palette is so pretty you have a lot of variety in the looks that you can create and it's not going to break the bank so if you maybe don't play with those crazy colors as much this might be a good option because it doesn't hurt the wallet but you're able to really experiment and you're getting good quality eyeshadows but if you like that pastel look that I was talking about you can get everyday pastels with simple washes of colors there's options for depth here as well and they did just restock it okay this palette sold out because Odin's Eye is literally killing the game right now. Every palette that they've come out with is selling out. This is no exception. So since it did just restock yesterday, if you use the code Morgan Turner, you can get an additional 10% off of it. Don't forget to use anybody's code. It doesn't need to be mine, but if you want it, it just restocked and it is amazing. Top 10 of 2022. Okay, the next palette. I mean, this was the first palette that I thought of when I was brainstorming what palettes I wanted to be in this video. I mean, this palette really knocked it out of the park. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 eyeshadow palette. I mean, what he's done with the textures of the rose tones is really amazing. It's not Pat McGrath Blitz Astral, but it's pretty darn close. It gives you that kind of look on the eye. The rose tones are very blendable and pigmented and here's the thing you guys we are constantly complaining about not needing another rose tone eyeshadow palette but Patrick Ta came in with this palette and made it a rose palette that stands out it's one of the best quality rose palettes that you can get and the shimmers are just everything so it goes to show yes maybe the makeup industry may be saturated we've seen every color story at this point but if you can make one that is impeccable quality and just give it that that special touch of oomph which Patrick Ta did, it'll send it right up to the top. It suddenly does not matter how many rose palettes we have on the market because this one is one of the best. So yeah, I mean, if you like rose eyeshadows, I highly, highly recommend this. If you don't like rose eyeshadows, I don't recommend this. You're only going to get rose toned eyeshadow looks with this, but there's a reason why there's so many rose toned eyeshadow palettes out there and it's because it's the most flattering on so many different skin tones. So yeah, I mean, impeccable quality. If you love glimmer, shimmer, all over the eyelid you're really going to enjoy this and everything about this palette is just really great the only thing I would say is I probably don't get as much use out of the cream shadows in here as I probably should but whatever I don't care everything else is so good and then finally the last palette that I have to talk about oh my gosh this came out in the very very beginning and you and everybody wants this to come back and it has not yet come back well maybe it is it might be but anyways there was a huge fight for it this is the best Tom Ford quad that has ever come out and I I have a very big attitude when it comes to Tom Ford because I feel like his quality is so inconsistent and the price is so astronomical, but when he hits it, when he hits it good, 
He hits it good, you guys. <laughs> That's the thing. That's why I keep coming back. I'm going to find those ones that are worth it, that make Tom Ford special. And this is one of them. This is the Metal Lust Quad. And you'll see it plays into the tones that I very much love for every day, which if I'm paying $89, I want to make sure it's a color story that I love. So this is one that I'm going to reach for. He has reformulated his shimmer formulation this year. And I hope it stays this way because this really is a step in the right direction. If every palette does not come with this shimmer formulation from here on out. He needs to go back to the drawing board. I don't know what he's doing because this, I'm not gonna say it's worth the $89, but for me, it makes it worth the $89 price point. The mattes are really, really great. And I find these to be a very, very special shimmer formulation. They're thick, they're not creasy, don't have too much fallout. They're very reflective, but still flattering. Just a really, really solid shimmer formulation that makes Tom Ford stand out more in the market compared to some of the other duds that he's launched. So yeah, I mean, this is still one of the ones that stands out to me this year. I want to reach for it all the time. It's so, so good. So if you can get your hands on Metal Lust, I totally recommend it. I think it's great. If you're interested in diving into Tom Ford, you know, if you want to take that first plunge, that's a good, reliable one to go for. But there we have it, you guys. Those are the top 10 eyeshadow palettes that I've tried so far in 2022. Of course, we have a whole six months ahead of us to try more eyeshadow palettes. You guys know I'm always down to try more. I have whole drawers full of palettes that I still need to uh, get going on. If you're interested in anything I'm wearing, I will have it linked down below. Below. I played with a lot of new makeup today. I have the new Pat McGrath blush duos on my cheeks, a new Pat McGrath highlight on my cheeks. There's some good stuff to check out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. And by the way, worst of 2022 so far is going to come out. That's the next kind of installment in the series. I already do have the best makeup of 2022 so far video up. So I will link that down below if you haven't yet checked that out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Have a good weekend.